have victory in the Lord tonight, say amen. Certainly he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Good to be here tonight and uh, good to be uh, here on a sunny night, isn't it? Thank the Lord for the rain, but uh, glad that it's over and that we've got a little bit of dry period tonight. So we're thankful for that and for his safety. Certainly he has kept us safe. Uh, if we're here tonight, then uh, I'm sure you were safe through all of this, and uh, God is just good to us and watches over us, and uh, we certainly need to pray for those that are uh, hurting tonight because of the waters and the floods that have come in different uh, counties throughout uh, this part of, of the state, and uh, I think other states as well, so let's, let's remember them. And uh, we'll go to prayer here, uh, certainly uh, miss Brother Jimmy, and let's pray for him and his family and pray that they get some rest and appreciate them and uh, just remember them. Uh, also, uh, the fellow that's having the toe taken off, was that today uh, that he was going to have that surgery? Okay, so let's, let's remember him. Uh, maybe you have a request tonight before we pray. Remember this. Yes. Yes. We would ask that you pray for uh, Charles's family. Continue to remember them. Also, uh, our daughter Leah, her family are going through uh, COVID right now. And uh, last night she was really uh, pretty bad, but uh, it's better today, thank the Lord. Uh, but do remember them. I'm sure there are others that are facing this as well. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's remember that. Yes. Amen. Take the and I think they're gonna they're gonna face the storm as well as the earthquake. So let's let's do remember those hurting people. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to praise him? Yes. Amen. Let's remember this. Yes. Amen. 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 Brother. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. 
Anyone else? Remember her and her need. All right, let's go to prayer. Our Father, we praise you tonight because you are God, because we can know you, and uh, we can know that as we pray to you that you hear our prayers, how good it is that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and present our petitions, our needs, and Lord, you've heard each of these needs tonight. You know, everything that has been mentioned here, every person, every uh, nation, every uh, community, Lord, that uh, is, we're concerned about. And God, we bring them before you asking that you would take care of each matter according to your will and according to your grace, according to your mercies in heaven. And I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to bless in the service tonight. We ask, Lord, that you would bless Brother Jimmy and his family, give them rest. And I pray that, Lord, they would come back uh, energized and uh, ready to go again. And we thank you, Lord, for their ministry here and for what you've done through the years. And thank you for this church. What a blessing they are to us. And I pray, God, that you just bless us tonight in this service. Have your way in every heart. And I pray that you would just use the word to be, uh, so that you would be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans chapter 16, and uh, I'll just read one verse, Romans chapter 16 uh, and uh, verse 20. Uh, you can look back at the earlier verses, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about those, uh, but do you remember Romans 16? Um, we were there not too long ago, Brother Jimmy uh, took us through Romans chapter 16, and uh, we stayed there uh, several uh, Sundays uh, and several services, a great job preaching out of this chapter, but there was this one verse in particular that spoke to my heart as he preached, uh, and I wanted to uh, talk about it tonight. Notice verse 20 here, and uh, it says, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. In this chapter, as uh, you have heard Brother Jimmy say, uh, Paul is giving a long list of heroes, a long list of people who worked together with him. These are people who had been faithful in the work of the Lord. Uh, these were people like Priscilla and Aquila who laid down their necks for Paul's life. There was also Timothy, Paul's son in the Lord. How proud he was of this young man, Timothy. There were others like Mary who had been a helper uh, to, to Paul. And uh, Lucas was a fellow Jew. There was also uh, Tertullius, the secretary who wrote the letter for Paul as he was residing at Corinth. He gives a long list of helpers here who helped him fight the battle. And certainly we are fighting a battle today. In verse 17, though, Paul pauses here to give a warning. As he gives praise for those who helped him, he stops to give a warning to these faithful people and to the church at Rome. Notice that he says, there are those people who serve not the Lord, but their own belly. They are out for their own gain rather than exalting Christ. Out to exalt themselves rather than exalting Christ. So Paul gives us some very encouraging words in verse 20. He encourages the Romans 
to persevere. These people who had been under persecution, these people who were facing these false teachers, people who were bringing in uh, false heresies, and he encourages them, these Christians, to persevere. And so he encourages us today. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Christians, I say to you tonight, to you who are faithful in the Lord, persevere and stand fast. For one day we will be discharged from this battle. We are fighting a battle now, but one day we will be discharged. One day we will put our feet on the neck of our enemy. It's symbolism that de describes the defeat of an enemy. Hunter wrestles. And uh, in Bible times, those who wrestled would uh, uh, beat their enemy or win over their enemy and then stand up and put their foot on the neck of the one they defeated. And uh, you remember uh, when um, David... Uh, defeated Goliath. What did he do? He went and put his foot on the neck of Goliath and then, of course, cut off his head as well. But we see that he is telling us as Christians, one day we will have victory. Now, I want you to notice more closely as you look at verse 20. First of all, Paul says that God is a God of peace. God is a God of peace. Did you realize that every person of the Godhead is for peace? In Romans chapter 15 and verse 33, the Bible says, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Again in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, Paul calls God the God of peace. In several other places, Paul uses the same phrase. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verses 20 and 21, now the God of peace that brought again the dead, uh, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, that, the, that shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God is a God of peace. He is a God of peace. But also, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of, his in, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Jesus didn't come into the world to bring trouble. He came to bring peace into the hearts of men and women who would accept him as their Savior. Jesus came to restore the brokenhearted. He came to restore the broken fellowship that was between God and man. When Adam sinned, he broke the fellowship that he, Adam and Eve had enjoyed in the garden. So when Jesus came and died on the cross, he restored that fellowship. He made a path back to God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13, but now in Christ ye who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath both uh, one, made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandment contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. So today, Jesus wants us to have peace. 
He came to give us peace. Being justified by uh, faith, we have peace with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God had a plan for each of us. For each one of you, God so loved you that he had a plan. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. God has planned for us to have peace. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We are all under sin. Sin and death has reigned over us. But thank God he came to give peace. Thank God he came to restore us unto God. The Bible says that Jesus died in our place so that we could have eternal life. God demonstrated or commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He is raised again the third day according to the scriptures, and he is the only way to God. There is no other way but Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And in him there is peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And then I tell you that the Holy Ghost also gives peace. I said in the beginning, every person of the Godhead speaks of peace. And so we see that the Holy Ghost gives us peace. In John 14, Jesus said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give us, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus came to bring peace. The Holy Ghost was sent to bring peace. God is a God of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And the Holy Spirit is the Comforter who provides peace for us. He came to give peace to us. And God desires that you and I could have peace in the midst of this confused and, and troubled world that we're living in. And oh, so much trouble today. Uh, but we know that at Calvary, Jesus brought God and man together and provided peace so that we could receive him, made it possible that we could come to God. And God is a God of peace. But the devil, the devil comes to disturb our peace. He comes to bring division and confusion. He comes to stir up the church and to bring trouble within the church. And this is what Paul was warning the church of as he writes to his brethren here, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division, offenses, those that were bringing false doctrines in, those that were bringing things that were untrue, that did not line up with the gospel. Beware of those because they are of the devil, and the devil does not want you to have peace tonight. He doesn't want the church to have peace. The devil was using these false teachers to deceive and to bring about false teaching, to bring confusion. And all through the ages, the devil has fought the peace of God. The devil has fought the church. If you are a Christian, if you're living for God, you know that the devil is real. You know that in your own life, he tries to disturb your peace. And there are times when he does do that. Peter said, he is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And you know that the devil uses the world systems to fight against us. The world system is against the church. The world system is not for us as Christians. But thank God there is a God of peace. 
Thank God there is a Prince of Peace. There is a Holy Spirit that comes and abides within us and gives us peace even when the world is in an uproar. At Calvary, Jesus fulfilled the scriptures, defeated Satan, and he was defeated, but he was not put away. At Calvary, you see, Satan bruised the heel of Christ, but one day Christ will bruise the head of Satan. One day he's going to put his foot upon Satan and say, you are defeated. One day he is going to cast a final blow. And this is the time that Paul is talking about when he speaks in verse 20, the God of peace shall bruise Satan's head shortly. You see, Paul was writing to encourage us. One day Satan will no longer uh, disturb our peace. One day he will be put put away totally. And we are victors. We sang the song, Victory in Jesus. And we can say tonight that we are victors through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can say victory in Jesus. I can see victory ahead. I can know that one day it's going to be final. So I want you to look with me tonight and see that we are winners. What Paul was talking about, we see the fulfillment as we turn to the back of the book. Aren't you glad you've read the back of the book and you know that you're a winner? Aren't you glad that you know that we are overcomers through the Lord Jesus Christ? We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 19, we see the judgment of the great whore. If you turn there to Revelation chapter 19, and we'll go through it real quickly. Uh, Not time to uh, mention every point, but I want you to notice that He begins by telling us there that there will be the judgment of the great whore. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. And so we see that judgment. But then we see the marriage of the Lamb and the return of Christ in judgment. Aren't you glad that we who uh, are called out, we who die in the Lord will one day be at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Praise God that he will bring the church together and Christ the groom and and the church, the bride, will come together and there will be that great marriage supper of the Lamb. And Christ will return in judgment. Now I want you to especially... Go with me here and follow along. Read with me, if you will, these verses. See, he gives us, as as Jesus comes to bring the judgment, we also hear the four hallelujahs. Notice verses 1 through 6, and notice that verse again back in verse 1, if you can flip back there. And I want you to read with me and say that word with me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it with me. In verse 1, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying what? Amen. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Then in verse 3, in verse 3, again, they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. In verse 4, again, a hallelujah. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God and sat on the throne saying, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I heard in verse 6, as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. So we see these four hallelujahs. There is rejoicing because the Lamb has come to bring judgments. 
we see the bride of the Lamb and the marriage supper, as we said. And then we see the return of Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords. Aren't you glad that we serve the one that is King of kings and Lord of lords? He's coming on the white horse as King of kings and Lord of lords. We were talking about it earlier. As we see these things that happened even yesterday, see, uh, hear about the earthquake, uh, the tornadoes that are coming, the, the rains that came, all the things that happened in the heavens, we might say, all these natural events, what is it telling us? It's telling us that soon the Lord is coming. It's telling us that one day soon we as Christians are going to have victory. One day soon we will reign with him. And so we see Christ coming, riding on that white horse as King of kings and Lord of lords. And he and the armies of heaven come to put down the forces of evil. And we uh, see this in the, the war of Armageddon. The war of Armageddon is mentioned in verses 17 and 18. We're not going to read all those verses, but I, I want you to notice that he mentions that, that that is going to occur. And then in verse 19 and tw through 21, he gives us a picture of victory. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God is coming to judge and the wicked will be removed from this earth. Hallelujah is that uh, expletive of praise as the final phase of salvation is coming to pass. Uh, we, we see the heavens rejoice because they know that things are winding down and victory is soon to come. It's something that Paul talked about in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 to 23. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 23. I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole earth groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they... But we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Even the earth today is groaning, looking forward to the coming of the Lord. And we as Christians should be like John who said, Even so, come Lord Jesus. We ought to be looking and longing for his coming. We ought to be praying that soon Jesus would come. And one day soon, that great day is coming. The earth will be released from the bondage of sin. In the meantime, the earth groans. As you turn to chapter 20, we see that Satan is finally defeated and put away. Satan and sin and death are eliminated. One day, the serpent will be crushed. First of all, in chapter 20, Satan is bound a thousand years. A nameless angel comes down from heaven and subdues Satan. The angel is anonymous. His name is not given. If you look there in the first part of chapter 20, the angel's name is not given, but he comes because Christ has sent him. It's not Christ, but Christ sends this anonymous angel to bind Satan. You see, someone has said there is a dramatic declaration here 
that Satan is not God's opposite. Remember that. Satan is not God's opposite. He's not his equal. You see, God could easily stop Satan's activity at any time. Yet he allows Satan to continue because even in his evil, God can turn that around. He indirectly serves the purposes of God. Don't ever say that Satan is the opposite of Christ. No, Christ is so much greater. Satan is a created being. Satan uh, was created by God. And Christ was there from the beginning. Christ is from everlasting to everlasting. Satan only has the power that God gives him or allows him to have. Christ has all power in heaven and in earth. And when Satan is bound a thousand years, we see in verse 2, he laid hold, that is the angel, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. Notice those words. He laid hold. He bound him. He cast him. He shut him up. He set a seal on him. Satan tried to imprison Jesus at the tomb. Remember that? He tried to get victory at the tomb. But he couldn't hold him. The grave would not hold him. And Jesus arose out of the grave, came forth alive and is living today. And here in the end, God has no problem restraining Satan. And this incarceration is not just punishment, but it is restraint. Restraint. By implication, Satan's uh, demonic forces, the armies of Satan are also restrained and imprisoned. And John says that he should deceive the nations no more. You see, it shows us that Satan's main mode of attack is revealed here. here. Satan is a deceiver. The Bible says he is a liar and the father of it. Satan is a deceiver and the most potent defense against Satan, the greatest weapon against Satan, is the truth of God's Word. The Bible tells us as preachers to preach the Word. You as teachers are to teach the Word. Give the Word to those that are lost. It is the Word that will overcome. They overcame through the Word of, his, of the Lamb. And since Satan's work of deception continues today, we know that he is not bound at this moment. In fact, we know that Satan, uh, he, he was not bound at the cross. He was doing his work trying to bind Christ. He was not bound at the resurrection or at the founding of the church. You read of the founding of the church and those early disciples that, that labored and gave their lives for the cause of Christ, but Satan was there all along fighting them, trying to defeat the work, but he couldn't defeat our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that Peter said that Satan is free to walk around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But this passage here in Revelation is telling us that one day Satan will be bound a thousand years. The thousand years is the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he is loosed for a little season. At the battle of Gog and Magog, Satan's forces will finally and completely be defeated. And then notice verse 10 of Revelation chapter 20, verse 10 of Revelation chapter 20. 
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. One day we will have perfect peace. No more devil to defeat us. No more devil to disturb our peace. Christian, I'm telling you this to encourage you. I'm saying this to tell you that one day we will have complete victory. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Amen. We will put our feet on Satan's neck. Shortly, Paul said, it won't be long. It's just a little while. It's not going to be long. We see the signs. We see what's happening. We see all the movement within the nations today. And we know it's not going to be long. Shortly. And if you move on to chapter 21, what a great, great promise we have. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And praise God, we will have victory, lasting peace with Jesus forever. Peace, peace, because he is the king of peace. And we will have final victory. Aren't you glad that you know the Lord tonight? Aren't you glad that he is real and we are on the victory side tonight? It's not going to be long, folks. It'll be just a short while and Jesus will return. It'll be just a short while and all the forces of heaven will come against the forces of evil. And the forces of evil will be put away. And we will have victory. Satan will be defeated forever. Praise God. We're on the victory side. Let's stand together tonight. Amen. He's good, isn't he? How good he is. And I'm glad that we can know him tonight. Amen. Brother Manny, if you will... Dismiss us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to come. And I feel unworthy to stand here in, in Brother Jimmy's place. I can't do that. But uh, thank you for the opportunity. And I appreciate this church so much and all that you're doing. Continue the good work. Look up. He's soon coming. Thank Brother Manny. Yes. A program of God has all the, the, the uniform and everything he needs to defend himself in the front. Nothing yes. covering his back because he will not flee backwards, Father. We thank you, Lord, because you have blessed this man that you have brought to us. Lord, you, our brother Lesnar has brought your word in order to thank speak. You. And we take that word and take it home with us tonight. We thank you for this service. Thank you, Father, for the blessings of the Holy Spirit. Tonight. Yes, thank you.